Hi everyone, welcome to another Vlogmas video. I hope lighting is okay. It's getting very late in the day and I've put on some little lamps here and there to uh, hopefully make things more visible. Because I have some really fun things to show you. Um, me and my family, we've already done our gifts exchange. Um, that you know i think most families around the world do with christmas but we tend to do that with santa claus um which is celebrated on december 5th it's kind of like dutch christmas uh we still celebrate christmas but you know with food uh, and not really necessarily with gifts um although with my boyfriend's family we we do our gifts exchange then but so, uh, and on December 5th, it was also my mom's birthday. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a double party. We, we just, we write gift, uh, wish lists and we put that, we have a shared Google document. Um, so my parents, my brother and my boyfriend and me, and all of us can go into that Google document and, you know, make our wish lists and then, uh, we can log in anonymously and like cross stuff out of other people's wish lists and it actually was quite a challenge for me to think about what I want to put on there because you know I don't need <laughs> I don't need anything um, yeah and uh, especially I, I, I want to do a separate video on this because uh, I haven't announced it here yet but next year on my patreon page I'm uh, doing the year of using what I have so buying less using more of what I have so uh, and I've prepared for that for months already so then making a wish list kind of seems you know, it just feels weird. Um, so I, I really tried to think about, okay, what will I actually use? And um, firstly, I thought of mohair. Uh, this is the only yarn that I asked for. And um, when I look at my most worn sweaters, um, it's the ones with mohair knit into it. Um, but I don't knit mohair into all of my sweaters because I often think it's too expensive because, you know, a sweater without mohair, say you're knitting a DK, uh, a sweater with DK weight yarn, you've already spent money on that yarn and the DK weight is perfectly fine to knit a sweater with on its own. Uh, so the, adding the mohair is really just an added luxury. But because it's really, it is the sweater that I wear the most. So I thought, yeah, <laughs> that this would be a good idea. And uh, I went online because I knew that, uh, so you've probably noticed that they are on cones instead of loose balls. And um, I looked for mohair on cones because it is uh, less expensive than on like loose balls and so I, th I think these are for machine knitting actually uh, but lots of yarn made for machine knitting has some kind of acrylic into it so it was really really difficult to find a mohair on cones that is fully natural and it was an Italian website yes it's woollyyarn.com but woolly with just one L. So uh, W O O L Y woolly yarn.com. And, and there are Italian yarns. And, you know, they have a lot of different options. Uh, and the mohair, <laughs> it doesn't even have a label, but it was just mohair and silk. And they have lots of other blends too, but yeah, this was the only mohair on cones that I could find that was fully natural. So that's why I wanted this. Um, I have, I asked for a really soft green, uh, it's kind of a sage green, and I have some, a really dark green yarn in my stash that I want to knit together with this, because I think that would be really nice. Uh, and then this caramel terracotta 
color. I just love it very much and uh, I don't have a yarn pairing in mind yet but um, yes this uh, yeah <laughs> will look pretty for sure so I asked for those and I also asked for two books on color because uh, you know color work is one of my passions and um, last summer when I was doing the summer knitting course um, I was following this course by Lorette, uh, Lorette Karman from the Amsterdam Steek, the Amsterdam Stitch. Um, she's a wonderful uh, knitting teacher. She is like, she has a wealth of knowledge and yeah, so inspiring. And uh, she taught the course together with Maartje from Strix, um, from a machine knitting studio nearby. And Lorette had so many books on color contrast. And it was just, you know, <laughs> I've published 100 knitting patterns up until now. And many of them with stranded color work or like mixing you know using more than one color and I've never thought of approaching the color combinations from a really I want to say scientific but like from <laughs> uh, yeah from from this theoretical point of view of our I've always just thought like oh yeah this is nice <laughs> and I want to learn some more so the first book that I asked for is by Johannes Itten. I think he's German. Johannes Itten. Kleure Leer. I'm not sure what the English version is. Color studies? I don't know. Um, Kunst der Farbe uh, is the German version. Uh, maybe it's uh, the art of color, something like that. But if you if you type in Johannes Itzen, you'll find it. And there's not many pictures in here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, he's just a genius when it comes to color, and I'm really excited to kind of learn more about this because yeah I just find it really really interesting um, so yeah the images don't really make sense in and out of themselves but um, and then the second book is by Josef Albers who I also think is from Germany Okay, I don't actually know. It just says Yale University. Yeah, so this is a um, English version. Interaction of color. And um, yeah, it just has, <laughs> yeah, interaction of color. So I, I guess this is the same color, but then in different positions and um, here, for example, I, I haven't read it yet at all, so I can't really tell you much about it yet. But um, I was told that these were the two. Um, so Johannes Itten, that's a book that Lorette Karman uses. And Josef Alberts was uh, recommended to me by my sister-in-law, who has studied art for, I don't know, six years um and you know she she's an artist she has her own atelier and yes very very exciting so she's she's a painter um yeah just really exciting um and she recommended this book that was their textbook um at the at the college so so yes i will be learning more about color and then, <laughs> I, 
I asked for um, a punch card. Ugh, I don't know how to... Um, oh, it actually has it on in, in English here. It's a card punch. <laughs> and what is a card punch? Well, um, I really want to buy a knitting machine next year. And this <laughs> is used, so this is a card punch. It's used with only specific, um, it's not really paper, it's like with punch cards. This card punch is used with punch cards. Um, uh, and, you know, when, when you finish the punch card, you put it into your knitting machine and you can create color work patterns that way. And, um, yeah. I find it super interesting and um, did you know I'm also going to teach a machine knitting course together with Maartje in Maastricht uh, on February 12th and and I thought it would be cool to take my own card punch and yeah I can do some practicing some more practicing before I buy my own knitting machine next year. Yes! And uh, there's one other that I want to show you, but it wasn't anything that I asked for. But I just thought you would appreciate. <laughs> now I actually did ask for, for this because aside from the yarn and the books, I asked for things that I could use up. <laughs> so food <laughs> and candles. So my mom got me this candle and it actually looks like a yarn ball and it's a candle so yeah it's one of those candles that you can't really bring yourself to use but it's really cute so yeah <laughs> and I got a whole basket of you know fancy food items um, I don't know what the what what companies usually do in your country but here in the Netherlands um, if you work at a company and for, for Christmas you usually get this huge Christmas box and it's usually filled with like luxury food items like jams and marmalade you've never heard of uh, chips with truffle taste you know all uh, truffle flavor I mean uh, fancy tomato sauce fancy crackers um, you know I don't know if it's the same way in other countries I guess it is um, but I've never had one of those because the companies where I worked I've only worked at one company the company where I worked um, they it was a food company <laughs> But they didn't give us food. <laughs> uh, so we usually got like uh, a rice cooker or, you know, some kind of utility tool to prepare. Anyway, um, right, so I also got a huge hamper of that. Um, right. <laughs> so I'm really excited to dig into these books. And you'll see these next year in a sweater or two. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it might have given you some um, inspiration for things to put on your own wish lists. Uh, do let me know what you ask for this, this Christmas. And I'll see you in a future Vlogmas video. Bye-bye!